At this point, we've built the whole app and it works well enough. You can go ahead and play it. Just select a flag and, and work your way through. So I'll choose US and I'm, I'm right. Poland down here, I'm right. Uh, and, and so on, right? But with all the Swift UI skills you've learned so far, we can actually take the design much further. We can reskin it. We're going to produce a different UI for the current project, and it won't affect our, our logic. Our logic is going to stay unchanged. We'll just try out a different UI just to see what you can do with your current knowledge. And if you don't want to, fine, stick with this one. But if you want to explore what you can do, let's see what we can get to. Now, I would say experimenting with designs like this one is a lot of fun. But please, I want to add one word of caution. At the very least, make sure you try your code on the full range of iOS devices. That's the smallest being iPod Touch 7th generation. The largest is the iPhone 13 Pro Max, right now at least. If I press Command R to build and run our code on there, you'll see there's a lot of difference in terms of space. So you'll try and find a design that works well in both. And honestly, that's not easy to do. It's in fact quite hard. So we have now uh, guess the flag here and then over here. And you can sort of see the side differences. Oops. Side differences is very, very big between these devices from screen edge to screen edge is about, about that. There's lots more screen on the Pro Max. Anyway, let's start off with our linear gradient. It's, it's nice enough, right? It works well enough. But I want to try something different, which is a radial gradient with custom stops. Now, previously I showed you how we can use very precise gradient stop locations to adjust the way our gradient's drawn. Well, if we make two stops that have identical positions, same locations to both, then the gradient goes away entirely. It becomes one color, hard line, next color. The color just goes from one to the other immediately. Let's give that a try with our current design. I'll say as a radial gradient with a stops array, and we'll do dot init, color uh, is oops, dot blue, location is 0.3. So 30% of the thing will be uh, our, our blue color. And then dot init, color dot red, location, again 0.3. So the same as our previous location. And we'll say center is uh, dot top, start radius is 200, end radius is 700. And now we'll get our radial gradient. It's an interesting effect. Um, you know, it's, it's a hard line here. There's no gradient anymore. It just snaps from blue to red immediately. Um, however, it's, it's also ugly. Um, the blue and the red here are much too bright to work in our game, I think. And so instead of using color.red and color.blue, we can send in toned down versions of these same colors to get something that I think looks more harmonious. So we'll say, instead of red and blue, uh, we'll say there's a color with red of 0.1, green of 0.2, and blue of 0.45. So a much dimmer blue like that. Then we'll do another one for the red. It'll be color red 0.76, green 0.15, and then blue 0.26. There we go. The kinds of colors you are much more used to seeing on flags, darker blues and darker reds. Next. Right now we have a VStack here with spacing of 30, which will place the question area and the flags. But I want to take the spacing down from 30 down to 15, despite there being loads of space. Down to 15. And the reason why is because we're going to make this whole VStack here, our question plus the flag area, into a distinct visual element in our UI, making it a colored, rounded rectangle so that's part of the whole game just stands out really clearly. To do that, we'll add some modifiers to the VStack down here. We'll say it has a frame where the max width is dot infinity. So it can stretch as far as it wants to horizontally. We'll then add a little bit of padding vertically. How much? 20 points. Then we'll add a background 
using the dot regular material material like this being well and then finally we'll say it's got a clip shape of a rounded rectangle corner radius of 20. So now we're saying this whole box in the middle can go across the way horizontally as much as it needs. A little bit of vertical padding plus this background material so we get a little bit of the blue and a little bit of the red just shining through. We then clip the whole shape to be a rounded rectangle. Now remember there are other materials if you want to experiment you could try thin material for example let more of the background come through it's down to you whatever works for you experiment and see which one you prefer i'm going to sit with regular for now keep it nice and bright i think it's already looking better but let's just keep pressing on see what we can get to our next step is going to be to add a title to this whole thing before the main box so the main box has tap the flag off france and three flag buttons this will be outside that box here, and this will be done with another VStack. Because this VStack here, the Spacing 15 one, is what creates this whitish rectangle area. I want the title outside of that. And so I'll place a VStack around it like this, then push it all in like so. So a new VStack here. And I'll put my title into there. I'll say as text, guess the flag with dot font dot large title. And then I'll do a weight of dot bold and then a foreground color of dot white. So it stands out neatly against the background like that. Now I would say that asking for bold fonts is so common. There's a slight shortcut. Rather than saying dot weight dot bold, you can just say dot bold, and it is very common. That adds our new title, gets the flag, which is very nice. We can also add a little score label, if I scroll down a little bit here, um, at the bottom of our VStack. So here's the text title, here's the inner VStack. Da -da -da -da. Down here at the clip shape, rounded rect, we're gonna add our score title. We'll say text score, question mark, question mark, question mark, foreground color, white, and then font, font, dot title, dot bold, like that. And there we go. Now, both this new title at the top, guess the flag, and score, question mark, question, question mark, they look great in white text. But the text inside, our little box area does not. We made it white because it was sitting on a dark blue earlier, but now it's not. Now it's just hard to read. Now to fix this, we can go ahead and remove one of the two color modifiers. I want to say that the correct answer is just no foreground color, which will mean it uses the primary color by default, i.e. black in light mode and white in dark mode. As for the tap the flag of text view, we can have this use the iOS vibrancy effect, letting a little bit of the background color kind of bleed through. And so change foreground color white to be foreground style dot secondary to get that sort of very gentle coloring. And it's subtle, it's like a very, very light grayish blue coming through because it's a background plus a little bit of the contrast. At this point, our UI more or less works, but I think it's a bit too squished up. You can see here uh, on the Pro Max, it's uh, very squished up. There's a lot of space elsewhere on the screen we could be using. I'm in dark mode here. Let's go back to light mode. There we go. So there's all sorts of space at the top and bottom where you could sort of spread things out a little bit. Uh, and also, this white box goes to the left and right edges of the screen. It's not very pleasant. Now to fix this, we're gonna add two things here. One is to add some padding to the outermost VStack. This main one here, that goes straight to the text guess the flag. And that requires a simple padding modifier. We're then gonna add some spaces around to push the content out neatly. Now on larger devices, these spaces will automatically take up the available space, the unused space. 
But on small devices like an iPod Touch, they'll virtually disappear, if not actually disappear. It's a great way to make sure our UI is flexible across all screen sizes. First up, <laughs> we're gonna say our spaces. And there are four I want to add. One is before the guest the flag title, like that. So we'll push this box to the bottom down here. I'll zoom out just slightly. There we go. So it goes to the bottom now. Then I want to add two spaces, yes, two, directly before the score label. So here and again next to it like that. And then finally, one directly after the score label. So here, like that. There we go. Now remember, when you have multiple spaces together like this one, they'll automatically divide the available space between them. We've got four, so it'll take all remaining space, split it into four. Having two side by side means it'll take up twice as much space as a single spacer. And now all that remains is to add a little bit of padding to the outermost V stack. So for me, it's this one here, like this. You get a little bit of padding just to push it away from the very edges of the screen. And that is our refreshed design complete. This one works. The old one works. The logic hasn't changed. It's down to you which one you prefer. I'll choose France and then Poland and then Ireland and so forth. It's all working very nicely. More importantly, it scales up or down correctly across various devices. So I've gone back to say iPod Touch 7th generation and had a look at how that worked. You'll see the UI still looks good here. It works great in a Pro Max, the biggest iPhone, going all the way down to this tiny little uh, um, iPod Touch 7th generation in light and dark mode, which is great. However, this is only one possible design. Maybe you prefer the old, simpler design. Maybe you wanna try something else. The point is you've seen how with your current Swift skills, we can take a fairly plain looking app and reskin it to look nicer or look different at the very least. You have the possibility of building a wide variety of things. And if you have the time, I'd encourage you to play around and see where you end up with this particular application.